Here's a short explanation of Masters of Renaissance. The game is produced by Cranio Creations. It's for one to four players, ages 14 and up. The average game time is approximately 60 minutes with the objective of the game to be the player with the highest score when the end of the game is triggered. What's in the box? You'll find four scoreboards, the market tray, 13 marbles, the market board, 48 development cards, 16 leader cards, the solo action tokens, 12 Pope's favor tiles, four faith markers, a tray with resources, coins, stone, servants, and shields, the inkwell, and six of the three times tokens. To set up, each player should collect a scoreboard and a faith marker. Place the faith marker at the top left of the board. Each player should also collect their three Pope's Favor tiles, one of each shade of color. Place those on the board in these spaces. Place the market board in the center of the playing area and place the market tray in the slot provided. Now place the marbles at random into the market tray. One will be extra and lays in this outer trough. Place the resources adjacent to the market board and place the three times tokens next to the resources. Take the 16 leader cards and shuffle them. Deal four to each player. Players will choose two of these leader cards to keep. They discard the rest and are returned to the box. The leader cards should be kept face down for now. Now take the development cards and separate them by color and by level. There are four different colors and three different levels. So you should have separated 12 stacks of cards. Shuffle each stack and then lay them out like this, with the level ones at the bottom, one of each color, then the level twos on the next row, and the level threes on top. Choose one player to go first. That player will receive the inkwell, indicating that they are the first player. Play will continue clockwise around the table. The player who goes first receives nothing additional. The second player gets to choose one resource of their choice before starting the game. The third player gets to choose one resource of their choice and they get to move their faith marker by one space. The fourth player gets to choose two resources of their choice and they get to move their faith marker by one space. Now we're ready to play. On a player's turn, they have to take one of three actions. They can select items from the market, purchase a development card, or activate the production line. Let's take a look at each of these options in more detail. When a player wants to choose something from the market, they must choose either one of the rows or one of the columns. Whichever they choose, you see which color marbles are in that line and then collect the corresponding resources from the tray. Yellow are coins, purple are servants, blue are shields, gray is stones, white is nothing, and red is faith. If you choose a line that has the red marble, this means you get to move your faith marker up one on the board. Once you make your selection and you have collected your resources, you take the extra marble from the trough and place it where the arrow is on the line that you chose. You now push that extra marble into the line and the end marble pops out into the trough. So the market is always changing throughout the game. When you have taken your resources, you will need to store them in your warehouse which is located here on your board. You will see that there are three shelves for storage. On each shelf, indicates the total number of resources that can go there. It's either one, two, or three. You can only have the same type of resource on a shelf that allows multiple spaces. For example, here on the second shelf, you can only put two of the same resource. The same goes for the third shelf. It is also not allowed to have the same type of resource on multiple shelves. For example, you cannot have coins on the first shelf and also on the third shelf. 
Anytime you bring new resources from the market, you may shuffle around your shelves in order to accommodate the materials. But be careful, if you have a resource that cannot be accommodated according to the rules, it must be returned. Plus, each of your opponents will get to move one space on the faith marker for each resource that is being returned to the market. Now we will look at the second option, which is purchasing a development card. On a development card, you will see the cost of each card is listed here. When you have enough resources to make a purchase, you announce that is what you will do for your turn, return the appropriate amount of resources to the market, and collect your development card. You can then choose one of the three slots to place your development card. If the slot is empty, only a level 1 card can go there. If the slot already has a level 1 card, then only a level 2 card can go there, and so on. You cannot skip a level just because you have enough materials. When you place a level 2 card over a level 1 card, you are no longer able to use the production ability from the level 1, but you will still collect the points at the end of the game. Purchasing development cards serves two purposes. One, you will see here a number, and this is the total amount of points that this card is worth, which will go towards your total points at the end of the game. The other purpose is the card has a production ability where you're able to convert resources into other resources or gain faith. Which leads us to our final option for a turn, activating production. If on your turn you wish to activate production, you announce that you are doing so and place the appropriate items into all of your production slots that you are able to or want to. You have the three slots from the development cards and you also have a fourth slot here where you can take any two resources in exchange for one other resource. Once you have laid out the resources you wish to run through the production, you collect all of the new resources from that production. These items now go into your strong box, which is located here. You are allowed to put any amount and any combination of resources into the strong box. The only restriction is that these items must come from production and not from the market. Once the production is complete, you return the items used back to the market, and if your production has any faith value, also move your faith marker up the appropriate amount of points. These are the basics for a player's turn. Now we'll take a look at the leader's cards. In order to activate a leader card, you must first meet the requirements of what is listed in the top left of the card. You do not need to pay for them with these items, you must simply have them. Once you have the correct items in place, you can flip over that leader card and place it to the side of your board. Activating a leader card usually provides two things. It will give you more points towards your total score, which is listed here, and it will also give you additional abilities, which are located here. These leaders will allow you to make a purchase of development cards for one less of the listed resource. These leaders will give you two extra spaces for storage in your warehouse. These leaders will allow you to turn white marbles from nothing into whatever is the indicated resource. These leaders will give you an extra production space where you can convert items from other resources and faith. Some leaders do not give any additional abilities, but they do have a high point value for the total score at the end of the game. If during your turn you decide that a leader is no good anymore, you may discard that leader card back into the box and receive one more slot on the faith marker. Speaking of the faith marker, you will notice that there are these yellow spots along the path. Each time a player reaches one of those spots, those points will be added to your final score at the end of the game. The higher up you go, the more points that are added. When a player is the first to reach or pass the hat of the Pope, that player will get to flip over their Vatican Report token, which will now indicate more points that they will be able to receive at the end of the game. Also, when this happens, any other player who are in this zone will be able to flip over their Vatican report. Any players who are not in that zone 
their Vatican report token is discarded. The end of the game is triggered by the first player to reach the end of the faith marker track or to be the first player to have seven development cards on their board. Depending on who that player is, the other players after who have not had a turn would get to complete their last turn. For example, if the player with the inkwell triggers the end of the game, then all of their players would get one last turn. However, if the third player triggers the end of the game, the fourth player would get a final turn. Once the final turns have been done, it's time for the scoring. First, add your highest number from the Faith Marker track. Then, total the amount of points you have received from the Vatican reports. Then, all of your points from the development cards. Then, the points from your activated leader cards. And finally, you get one point for every five resources that are still in your possession at the end of the game. The person with the highest score is the winner. If you ever run out of resources in the market, you can use these three times tokens to substitute for resources in a player's strong box so that you can put resources back into the market. If you want a real challenge, you can also try the solo version of the game. The setup of the game is the same way. Only this time, place the black cross next to your faith marker on the board. Shuffle the solo action tokens and make a stack face down on the table. You take your turn as normal. Then, after your turn, you reveal the first solo action token and apply the effect listed. These tokens indicate that you should remove two development cards of that color from the lowest section of the grid possible. This indicates that you should move the black cross forward by two spaces. This indicates that you should move the black cross forward by one space and reshuffle all of the solo tokens to create a new stack. The black cross represents Lorenzo il Magnifico. If this cross reaches the Vatican report, you would activate it as normal following the normal rules. The solo game ends one of three ways. If any one of the development card sets are no longer available, you have lost the game. If the black cross reaches the final space on the faith marker tracker, you have lost the game. If your faith marker reaches the final space or you are able to purchase seven development cards, you have won the game and tally up your score. What will your best score be? Are you ready to accept the challenge? Well, now you know the basics, so let's play.